Hey guys, hi, it's Dr. Cindy. It's been a while. Wow, I think it's been at least two, maybe three months since I've gone live. And I'm here tonight really just to quickly touch base to update you on two big things that are happening for me and to maybe get you to partner with me on these two big initiatives. So the first is, I don't know how many of you are aware, but I am uh, one of the physicians featured in PBS Nova's most recent episode, which is called Fighting for Fertility. It aired on PBS, which for those who aren't familiar with the acronym, it's a television station here in the United States. Uh, PBS is Public Broadcasting Service. And NOVA is their science and health uh, special um, segment. It's its own network all, almost. So PBS NOVA partnered with Larkin McPhee, who is an Emmy Award winning writer, director, and producer to create this documentary titled Fighting for fertility. Fighting fertility, Fighting for Fertility is a pretty amazing documentary. It's about 46 minutes long, and you can view it right now, either streaming on PBS itself, or you can go to YouTube. I've actually included the link in this, um, the caption to this video. And so you can go to Fighting for Fertility, where you'd be able to to view the documentary, um, it's you know, it covers so many aspects of fertility, the struggle for it, fertility care, treatment, access, and just what that's like. It also really discusses some of what we know to be true about declining sperm counts, uh, the environmental impact on sperm counts, and why uh, if we look at sperm counts in 2021, the numbers are about 50%, 50 percent lower than sperm counts uh, 40 years ago. So, you know, it really highlights a lot of issues there. It covers transgender health and the journey toward building families for our transgender patients. It covers uh, infertility and the fact that the numbers are so strikingly yet secretively high in the black community. And just addressing the taboos um, that led to the fertility and breeding myths that have continued to bring shame amongst those members of the black uh, community and the African uh, community and diaspora the worldwide um, when it comes to talking about fertility, infertility, and seeking out care. Uh, it also covers some of the factors that negatively impact one's uh, fertility when it comes to fibroids, endometriosis, PCOS, and of course, the impact of structural and systemic bias on one's own health and how that can further negatively impact your fertility and your ability to carry a pregnancy safely and healthily throughout. So I hope you guys will check it out. It's called Fighting for Fertility. PBS Nova documentary. It features physicians including myself, Dr. Cindy Duke, Dr. Amy Eva Zede, Dr. Jamie Grifo, Dr. Kareen Chung, <clears throat> amongst others. So do please check it out. There are amazing patient vignettes, patients including Reverend Dr. Stacey Edwards Dunn. She shared her story, her journey to becoming a mom as a woman of the cloth, meaning a member of the clergy, and just how difficult that was being a black woman having to admit to herself that she was struggling with infertility. But on top of that, as she so eloquently shared uh, what it was like being a reverend, a pastor, who was struggling with infertility herself and reconciling the fact that she didn't feel comfortable telling her own congregation about her journey, even as she helped them pray for their own infertility struggles, because she felt like if she were to admit that she was struggling with infertility, she was somehow going to have to 
she was going to somehow look like someone who's not worthy of praying for her own congregation because clearly she wasn't being blessed in terms of her words. That's how she viewed it. And then she also shares about how she overcame that and started this amazing organization called Fertility for Colored Girls. And so do please check it out. Again, it's Fighting for Fertility. You can either see it on Nova PBS's website, or you can go just on YouTube, type in Fighting for Fertility, and you will see the film. It's a tremendous film. Do please share it with friends, share it with your colleagues. You can watch it with your kids. It's very educational and worth the watch. It's worth the watch. Okay, so that's one of the amazing things happening for me um, in terms of professional things. Uh, the other thing coming up this week that I'd love your help with is I am one of the three co-chairs of the American Medical Women Association Infertility Committee. And this committee was formed as a result of a call to action paper uh, authored by Drs. Vineet Arora and Dr. Ardovan Salas. And in that paper, they you know, conducted research and highlighted research which showed that at least 25%, meaning one in four women physicians who are done with training, meaning attending physicians, struggle with infertility, struggle with infertility. And if you're trying to understand whether that's high or not, in the general population, we estimate that infertility affects about 10% of the population, right? And yet here we are saying, if you were to sample women physicians, 25% of them, in terms of women attending physicians, those who are done with all training, residency, and or fellowship, we are going to find that 25% of them are in fact struggling with fertility issues. And of course, a lot of that has to do with age-related decline in fertility. Yet, despite knowing these stark numbers, we don't really have a lot of uh, structure in place to ensure that we're educating medical students about their fertility about how to test their fertility. Uh, we, we're certainly not educating them really about fertility preservation, whether it be talking about egg freezing, sperm freezing. We're certainly not talking about the cost, which to be quite honest with you, the majority of medical students and residents and certainly early career physicians are in tremendous amounts of death. I was not death, well, debt, <laughs> D-E-B-T. Um, truth be told, here in the United States, the average medical student is graduating with six-figure debt, right? Many of them are actually approaching half a million dollars in debt when you factor in the cost of college, living expenses for college, the cost of medical school. And so they're coming out of re uh, medical school, entering their residency training in debt. Our residency training pays not a whole lot of money. And so they also start their careers out in debt. And it is not uncommon for a physician to be still paying student loans, college and medical school loans, well into their 50s, even though retirement is going to be more around right, early 60s, mid 60s. And so it's very, very expensive to live and become a physician as an example. Now, I recognize that women in healthcare in general face similar uh, issues. And so in this conference, this summit, and that's what I'm here to talk about, this Saturday, June 12th, we will have the inaugural Infertility Summit hosted by the American Medical Women's Association. And this summit is for all women in healthcare and those who were born with ovaries. So our non-binary friends and colleagues and family members who were born with ovaries or, and or uteruses who would like to speak about the issues as it relates to fertility. We have a segment 
that will be titled Fertility 101. Uh, we have a segment talking about how you yourself can become an advocate at your institution. Uh, you will actually get some tangible uh, pointers and how you can push for actual fertility benefits at your institution or your organization, we are going to be joined by a physician who successfully was able to work on not only lobbying for coverage at her institution, but for getting them to implement actual coverage, actual fertility benefits that cover fertility diagnostic services like the blood work, the testing, the semen analysis, the hysterosalpingogram. But on top of that, also the treatment, getting them to cover like the insemination and in vitro and egg freezing. And of course, you know, to many people that sounds surprising, but the truth is most physicians, most medical students for sure, and residents do not have access to fertility care or benefits, even though pretty much from the moment we enter medical school, we're signing up for 15 to 20 years of training, uh, of being underpaid while debt continues to rack up, while interest continues to grow. And yet, you know, there are just so many ways in which you're coming out already in debt. You're coming out still needing to start a life for most people, hoping to start a family in one version or another. Um, and and discovering if you're someone born with ovaries especially that your egg numbers are much lower than you thought they were going to be in fact that's because when we're born with ovaries by the time we're 30 at least 70 percent of the eggs we were born with are gone because we do not make new eggs as we age and so on top of the eggs going away by 40 97 percent of those eggs that you were born with are gone but on top of that they're now whatever age you are technically they're about four months older than you are and so really that's the purpose of this summit is to one highlight those details to make sure that we're pointing out exactly how fertility works, how our eggs work in terms of what you're born with and your ovarian reserve as it declines. And then how do you advocate for self? How do you get information to help you advocate for self? And also hearing from those who actually did it, from those who frozen their eggs as medical students or those who froze their eggs as early career trainees, physicians. Um, this conference is not only open to physicians though, it's open to physicians, to dentists, to nurses. If you are in the health profession, if you are someone who identifies as a woman or someone born with ovaries, we welcome you to the summit. Uh, if you use the code VIP when you go to the website for the registration, you would actually be able to register at no cost to you. And this applies to whether you're in the United States or outside of the US. We welcome our friends who are within this space, who are within the healthcare space as women in medicine, those born with ovaries who are in medicine, anywhere you are in the world. If you'd like to join this conversation, if you'd like to come to this summit, which is a half day session this Saturday, June 12th, I implore you now to go to the website. Uh, it's linked here in the comments. Uh, for those who are watching, if you're not willing to go look at the link, it is bit.ly, so B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash A-M-W-A-P-F-S. I'll put it in the comments here as well. But if you go to this website, you can register. You can register tonight, you can register tomorrow, and if you type in the code VIP, literally the acronym for very important person, because you are, you're very important. If you type in VIP, you'd be able to register for this conference at no cost, yet it's a conference that will give you CME credit. CME credit, how cool is that? So not only do you get to come and learn about the struggle when it comes to infertility and all of the intersectionality as it relates to us women and those born with ovaries who are within medicine, but you're also going to get information about how you can become an advocate at your uh, education or institution, how people have actually made that change and effectively managed to get their institutions to include fertility benefits as part of healthcare coverage. And more importantly, 
how do we go ahead changing the culture? How do we change that culture in medicine to create more inclusive spaces, spaces where people are welcomed, spaces where there's not judgment if someone needs time off to go get their eggs harvested or to go get their fertility treatments, you know, a, a situation where it is not actually punitive if you were someone looking into that. And so we certainly hope you would join us. I hope you join us. Um, again, it's the AMWA inaugural infertility summit this Saturday. If you go to this website that I'm typing in right now, you can actually go ahead and register. And again, if you use the code, one second, I'm typing and speaking. If you go to this website, that's the conference site, and then use the code VIP to register at no cost. And anywhere you are in the world, you can use this. Join us on Saturday. You also can get a CME, uh, you get CME credits, but you also can and will get a certificate for attendance if you so chose. And so do please join us. I hope everyone is doing well. Good night, Lisa. Nice to see you. Good morning for you. whoever that is who's in the Philippines on LinkedIn. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Again, this conference, the AMWA inaugural Infertility Summit is for physicians, dentists, uh, phys physical therapists, uh, pretty much, you know, and when I say physicians, I mean our naturopathic doctors, our doctors of allopathic medicine, the MDs, the doctors of osteopathic medicine, our DOs, we're all welcome. Medical students, welcome, welcome, welcome. Residents and training, welcome. So wherever you are in the world, if this is information that you think you could use, information that maybe you can learn from and bring back to your own home institution, even if you're outside of the U.S., do please join us. Again, infertility, when we look at physicians in particular, women physicians who are outside of their training, meaning they're now attendings, the rate of infertility is 25%. And that is way high when you compare it to the 10 to 12% that we say is the average in the general population. Okay, guys, so those are the two big things I came on tonight to ask you to partner with me on. First one is go watch the Nova PBS uh, documentary titled Fighting for Fertility. You can find it on the Nova PBS website or you can go to YouTube. I've actually linked the YouTube to this um, caption of this video. So you can just click on that link and go there and watch it, Fighting for Fertility. And secondly, uh, this Saturday, do please spread the word uh, to anyone who you know that's a physician, woman in medicine, person born with ovaries who is a physician or a person in medicine, do please go ahead and encourage them to register. They can go to that website that I've shared in the comments and also in the caption of this video, and they can register to be a part of the conference, learn. Again, we're having sessions titled Fertility 101, how to be an advocate, how to First of all, how do you go about inquiring about benefits and what are the benefits that are available and how does that coverage system work? We also will have breakout sessions wherein we'll talk about egg freezing and what it's actually like, the day-to-day -day practical steps for egg freezing and what you might want to do to start boosting your uh, own fertility. Uh, we talk about the realities of egg freezing, which is uh, really, as you age, you need more eggs. It's really paradoxical. Obstacle, right? The older you are, the more eggs you need to freeze to actually have a really good chance at a live born baby. Yet at the same time, as you age, your ovaries have less eggs in them. So it's, you know, it's a really fine line that needs to be walked and you need to find the experts who can do that. We talk with uh, students who did it while they were medical students in terms of freezing their eggs. And we'll also talk 
with uh, those who did it as residents, those who done it as attendings, and just how difficult that journey might have been. So definitely, definitely be there. Otherwise, I hope everyone's doing well. As for me, I have been actively working on losing some weight. And for those who haven't seen me in a while, yes, I cut my hair short a bit. Um, the other things are, this is June. June is Pride Month. So I have a number of events coming up that I'll, you know, preview as they become available as we talk more about LGBTQIA patients within the reproductive health space and how that is perceived and how one can really create inclusive spaces for all patients who come through your door at your reproductive clinic um, with some extra focus on LGBTQIA patients since we're in LGBTQIA uh, Pride Month. It's also Caribbean American Heritage Month. And as a Caribbean American myself, I'm very proud of that and have been highlighting that on my Instagram. So come on over and check out some of those posts. It's also Fruits and Vegetable Awareness Month. And I really, really, I spend a lot of time talking to patients about healthy diets and nutrition and really eating the colors of the rainbow and i'm doing the same during this month with emphasis on you know what are the naturally healthy ingredients of fruits and vegetables how to source healthy fruits and vegetables if you feel like you're in a location where that is not as accessible um, as you would like it to be so definitely 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 check out i see dr frank north who is a pharmacist who's part of the road network um, hi dr frank happy happy monday evening Nice to see you. Um, so yes, guys, definitely check out. I know it's been a while since I've done a live. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for catching the video. For those who aren't familiar with me, I'm Dr. Cindy Duke. I am an obstetrician, gynecologist, reproductive endocrine and infertility specialist, as well as a PhD trained virologist, which actually makes me America's only dual fertility doctor and virologist. Yes, I have that honor. So, <clears throat> and so thank you so much for joining me. I am the medical and laboratory director as well as physician founder of the Nevada Fertility Institute, <clears throat> which is a clinic in Las Vegas. Anyway, <clears throat> I have a bit of a tickle. I think I should end the live. <laughs> so see you guys soon. Again, check out the PBS, Check, come join us <clears throat> at the conference. Bye, everybody. <laughs>